President Kofuado says he's committed to the fight against Galamse and challenges former President John Mahama to state his position on the matter of illegal mining. And this comes on the back of the demands and the calls by many to have the president speak on it. In fact, the president had been silent on this matter until today. He's made a statement, but that statement is directed rather at the, the former president, the flag bearer of the NDC, demanding that he states his position on this matter because, according to the president, he has had to pay the political price of this commitment to the fight against illegal mining in the past, but not presently. Take a look. Somebody who wants to be president, he can't change his mouth. One side of his mouth is saying one thing, the other side of his mouth is saying another. It is not good for him. In the 2020 elections, after the government had acted on the Galamse, he went around all the mining districts of Ghana to tell them that when he comes, he's going to give amnesty to anybody who has been attacked by, on the Galamse issue by my government. So it's not surprising that MPP lost in all those constituencies. That when he comes, he will now enforce the Galamse laws. We want the NDC, four-time NDC presidential candidate to come clean, to tell us where does he stand. This is what I meant when I said that I was prepared to put my presidency on the line. I was prepared to take the political risk in dealing with them, Galamse. Well, that's President Kofuado there indicating, you know, that statement he had made earlier and referencing that as the political cost that he had to pay. In fact, there are many who have also contested that position about the, the MPP losing all the seats in the mining areas because what you, when you look at the results in the 2020 elections also raises fundamental concerns about whether that is actually what happened. But one person who has been demanding that the president does more in the fight against corruption and also illegal mining and also giving the verdict of the president on this fight against illegal mining as a failed one is none other than a founder of the MPP and also a former military uh, senior officer for that matter. Toby Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo is joining us on the telephone. We had a little hitch with the Zoom connection, but he's joining us on the telephone now. Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, first of all, you've, you've had the press. Let, 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 me, let me make one or two corrections. I am not a founder of the party. I am a founding member of the party. Uh, That's point number one. Uh, point number two, I am not a senior officer of the party, of the military. I was a junior officer of the military, even though I was a doctor. Thank you very so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, for that also yeah. bringing in the, but also a founding member of the MPP. That's I think right. That, that's, that's pretty clear, uh, as I they state. But first off, you had the president make, make that um, assertion about what happened in the 2020 elections and the fact that he had to pay the political cost because of his commitment to fight illegal mining and throwing the charge to the flag bearer of the NDC for that matter. You have given a verdict to his fight against illegal mining as a failed one. He doesn't seem to agree with you, at least based on what he said today. Well, I'm not surprised at all at the president's uh, statement today. I'm not surprised because <clears throat> this is very typical of Akufu Adu. Akubu Adu does no wrong. What he knows is to shift blame instead of doing the needful. Now, if you listen to him carefully, as usual, he's trying to absolve himself instead of going straight to how to fix the problem. History will surely absolve him and his bad deeds. Now, 
I think I've said in your program before that this particular operation is not a political operation. It must be an operation that will be handled entirely by the military. And it is an operation that just a company cannot handle it. It must be an operation that will be handled, handled by a whole battalion to be able to, 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 to have a very successful operation. You need a whole battalion for that. It was just a company. A company is just about uh, roughly about less than even 200 at times so soldiers. They, they cannot handle such an operation. So to me, the entire operation should be left in hands of the military. They should be given clear objectives and targets. And the rest should be left in hands of their commanders. And I can assure you, if that is done, within a week, you see a change. Because where well, we have an instance where the military have been there four days and they left, we all see what has happened. So it's just a waste of money and time. That is another point you didn't forget. Now, the operation to entirely be free from directions or directives of politicians. The issue facing us now is a national problem. It is not partisan in any form. It must be tackled as such. Imagine when you have what we call hemorrhage, that is blood flowing. What a doctor will do first is to find or identify the source of the bleeding. And you put that, you fix that first. After fixing that, you see that you find your way through the operation. It is the same in handling this problem. We should find the source of the problem. And the source of the problem is so clear. It's surface mining. So a halt should be made to all surface mining as soon as possible. And that is where we have to declare a state of emergency on all surface mining, river bodies and forests. License or no license. And so far, this is what I would say. I see, but that call for a state of emergency, at least from what we see now, has not been considered by the presidency because that's one that the TUs, if the organized labor made, or UTAG also made that demand. But as we speak, there hasn't been any indication that that will be granted. Yeah, it's, 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 the answer is very simple. It's because they are involved in the mining. They are involved. The report of Professor uh, before Boatin mm -hmm. states that clearly. He even mentioned the names of those of them are involved. If, if, if the president wants us to believe him, he should come and he should uh, have the report published as soon as possible so that we all see. They are involved. Now, when you are involved in a situation and somebody is trying to arrest you, definitely you kick against it. That is what we are saying. They are involved. Those heavy caterpillars are not for those boys around, those poor boys. The caterpillars were bought or have been bought by people with money in their pockets. And these are those really running affairs of the state. That's why we call for a complete emergency, state of emergency for surface mining, let me underline that, in river bodies and all forests in the area of mining. As I said, license or no license. If they are able to stable that, then you know what to do next. This, I'm sure, will be the way the military will tackle it. Tommy Dr. Tomaklo, and I want you to stay with me because you made reference to an issue about what is happening now with the re-engagement of the military in this new phase of the fight against illegal mining. Well, the Birim River is one of the first places the, the, the renewed Operation Halt 2. Um, started the operations. They bent a number of chamfans, 13 of them, and see some 10 uh, water pumps. We're learning today that this Brim River, after that operation, four days afterwards, the, the miners are back. And we're going to put on the screen what the military did uh, that was sometime last week when they, this renewed Operation Hall 2 clamped down on illegal mining started. Let's, let's look at what they did first off um, on, on the Brim River. Yes, they went there, bent a number of these Champ fans and uh, these that's water pump machines as we saw and that's what is on the screen right now 
this was part of the operation last week and destroyed a number of these equipments that the illegal miners use. Well, I would have yeah, thought that, that after, 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 after this, it would have deterred the miners. But from what we are seeing now, today, based on some videos that Adam Srem, a celebrated videographer, uh, made available to us here on TV3, he shows quite clearly through a drone video footage of what's happening on the Brim River that the miners are back. Let's put that on the screen right now. Four days after the military left the Brim River, these illegal miners are back to work. Let's see that. That's what's well, happening not, right now. I am not surprised at all about what we are seeing now. That's why I said this is not a work of a company. A company, just a company of a battalion. You need a whole battalion. Indeed, we have about six battalions in, of infantry in this country. If we really need to correct things, if even four of them should be dispatched to that place, let them dispatch them there. Because you have to close all avenues that are all avenues of escape. And if you're able to do that, you can pursue the individuals that are causing problems to our river bodies. If we have a whole battalion is not working, send that if we have space. Space even if we send four or even three there, definitely this thing will come to a, to, to, to an end. Because if, if a battalion goes there and leaves about 100 soldiers or 50 soldiers, the moment they leave there, that, that will be the end. The, the miners will come back. That definitely is one thing we should have, uh, we should have, uh, uh, what do you call it, expected from the, from the miners. Because if they realize that the soldiers are no longer there, they will come back. You have to leave quite a number of soldiers to guard the place. And if you keep on doing that for a while, that, that will definitely keep them at distance. And they might not even return at all. Dr. Nyaho, Nyaho Tamaklo, thank you for your assessment of the situation and also the recommendations you make thereof. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you, too. It's always. Dr. Togwe, Dr. Nyaho, Nyaho Tamaklo, the founding member of the MPP, also served in the military now. And just for the benefit of uh, getting a clear idea of what's happening on the Brim River right now, let's put the, the latest, uh, as was uh, provided by Adam Srem, what's happening on the Brim River now, four days after the military left that area, uh, the clamp down on uh, illegal miners. Well, they are back. They're back. They're back to uh, destroying and polluting the Brim River. You see some of the chamfans that were destroyed by the military some few days ago. Well, guess what? The movements you see there are these illegal miners who are back to that Kalamse site on the Brim River. They're back working briskly. Recall government deployed this over 100 armed military personnel to various water bodies in its attempt to raid Ghana's water bodies of illegal mining activities. Well, the situation now is that when the military leaves, the miners return. And that is what Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo says. It is not a good approach. It cannot work. It would not make any significant impact in the fight against illegal mining in this country. And these drone shots you see there by Adam Srem clearly captures the, the, the limitations in this renewed approach to fight illegal mining in this country. That's the Birim River right now.